Good afternoon Moto Guzzi owners. Um, in this short video I am hoping to uh, clear up some of the um, misunderstandings about the dashboards and the user code that needs to be programmed into them on Moto Guzzi models from approximately 2005 through to 2017. This includes um, basically the entire series of um, what we call Kark bikes. Um, they include the Grisso, the Norge, the Stelvio, the 1200 Sport and the Bellagio. Um, the thing is there's a lot of confusion about this. It is covered in the um, owner's handbook, but because these bikes are now getting older, um, many second owners do not end up with a handbook and may not be able to find um, a version of it online. So I'd just like to cover the importance of inserting a user code and how to do it. Um, so anyway, I, you don't want to look at my mug any longer. I will head outside and we can start looking at some motorbikes. Thank you. Now, although I am principally going to be uh, performing this task on a Moto Guzzi Grisso, um, in fact, the way you go about it on all the models is pretty much the same. There are differences in the switch gear and how they operate, but the dashboards um, all operate the same way and have the same functions. On the Grisso, you have a button on the front of the switch gear here. That is the one that you use for scrolling through the menus. And if we come around the other side of the bike, you can see on this switch block, you also have at the top here, a three-way switch that has trip one, trip two, and mode. And for our purposes, we are going to leave the switch in mode. All right, from here, we turn the dash, the ignition on and the dashboard will come to life. Now, when you install a new dashboard or if a code has never been inserted, you will get this message at the bottom of the board saying, do not forget to insert your user code. Now, the user code is a security device and we'll cover that a bit later. But what I want to show you how to do is to insert a code. Now the code is something you must be able to remember um, because it will get you out of a pickle if you break down somewhere on the side of the road and the key isn't recognized. <coughs> the information about the chip which is in the key, if I show you here, these keys have a security chip in the top of them. Around the ignition switch here, there is an antenna. And when you put the key in and turn it on, you will find that the uh, key chip sends a signal to the dashboard. And if the dashboard uh, recognizes that signal, it will allow the dashboard to go through its sweep uh, the fuel pump will run for a couple of seconds and the entire system will be able to boot up. After which you can press the start button and the vehicle will start. Now, looking at this again, you can see there's that message, remember to insert your user code. And that's what we're going to do. So the first thing we do is go back over the switch gear and put the switch in mode. From there, using that button, on the front of the, um, on the, front of the uh, switch block, you can, Using rapid presses of the button, scroll through the various things that come up at the bottom of the dash until you get to menu. You then hold the button on the front of the switch gear down 
and it will bring up a menu. There you can see settings, lap timer, diagnosis and language. We need to go into settings. So you just give one quick press of the button and then hold it down and it'll bring up a second menu. And here you can see the menu says time settings. We don't want that. Gear shift indicator. We don't want that. Backlighting. We don't want that. Centigrade or Fahrenheit, 12 or 24 hour for the clock. And right down the bottom, you will get change the code. So we go down to change the code and hold the button down. And it will say, insert new code. Now, as I said, this is a security code and will allow you to start the bike if you have a problem with the antenna braking or if somebody has tried to force the lock and it won't allow you to use the key. The dashboard won't recognize the, um, the key and it won't allow the bike to start. But we need to insert a new code. So for the sake of uh, this, We'll just insert one, two, three, four, five as a code. It's a five digit code. So one quick press the button, one, hold the button down and it moves on to the next one. Two quick presses, goes to two, hold the button down. Three quick presses, hold the button down four quick presses. If you go past it like I just did there, you just keep on scrolling round until you get back to the number you want. So there's four, hold it down, and five. I've gone past it again, so we just go right round. Five. Now, hold the button down and it will go back to the previous menu. Now that has now put that code into the dashboard. From here, we can turn off the dash, or turn off the ignition, wait for the dashboard to um, cease to, to function, put the key in, turn it on again. Everything works as it should do. And if you try the other key, The other key works as well. So what we've done is we've inserted a user code and as I said the purpose of the user code is that if somebody tries to steal the bike or damages the area of the antenna around the key you can start the bike and then ride home after which you can set about fixing it. Um, if you haven't got a user code you're going to be dead in the water you're going to be sitting there just waiting for um, the tow truck to come and take you home at considerable expense. So it is worth putting in a code. When you first um, get a new dash, you will find, or if you've uh, never had a code inserted, you will find that the original code is five zeros. And you can always put the code, that code back in, and then you will get the, don't forget to insert your user code message again at the bottom of the dash at key on. But um, the thing is, if you have a separate user code that you've installed yourself, it's an extra level of security. Um, if anybody does try and steal the bike, well, it's going to ask for the user code. They're not going to know it. OK, um, from there, I will come back shortly and we will go into the subject of uh, what happens if you've bought a bike that you don't know the user code for. But that'll be the next video.